What's up Hobby Maniacs, Rob Bear here today with a hobby unboxing of the Vallejo Rust Stain and Streaking box set. Make sure you stay in the trenches, subscribe to this YouTube channel, check out the blogs by gibbetsblog.com and head on over to thelongwar.net, that's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content and early access videos. Become a veteran of the long war today. So this is a really interesting little uh, kind of uh, combo deal, I guess, set for doing rust and all sorts of weathering and different effects on your vehicles. And it's a, it's a nice little package. It comes with really good looking colors and one wash in here and a step-by-step kind of uh, tutorial so to speak by somebody called scratch mod and I'll be honest I don't know who scratch mod is I hadn't heard of him but it looks like he does really good work so I'm on board with that with anything from that guy two of the paints in here are, are actually Vallejo air colors not that it makes a difference because I actually use the air color a lot of times when I'm painting you know just uh, normally with a brush because you know they're so thin I know it's not gonna dry out on me you know kind of while I'm painting it so here's some of the paints you know close up of what you're gonna get in here which I think is really cool I wish Games Workshop offered something like this you know and uh, good on Vallejo for for you know stepping up to the plate and putting something cool out like this because there is really you know doing rust and doing rust effects is kind of like the um, I don't know I want to I wouldn't want to say it's like the final frontier out there for hobbying but it's definitely like one of those big question mark areas I feel like in the past Airbrushing has been like a big question mark for a lot of people, but you know as it's becoming more and more mainstream It seems like everybody's willing to try airbrushing But then when it starts to get to like the weathering and things not a lot of people are willing to try it because yes It does take a lot more extra time It's nothing that can you know be commercially offered by a paint studio because just because it is so you know time intensive for a lot of a lot of things now I know Kenny over at next level painting does a lot of you know weathering and things but it's all it's all stuff that can be done quick you know when you're talking about drawing stains and things over and over in repetitive manners it's very hard to pay somebody for their time to do that however from the hobbyist standpoint you know this is what we crack out on this is what we love so taking a look at the colors that come in the set you got Vallejo model air wood which is a really good one I use a lot of the different things then you've got orange rust which is a good base for a lot of different things as well in the Vallejo line. Then you've got, which I didn't even know they did, apparently something called Light Rust Wash, which I didn't even know Model Color had some sort of thing. Then you get into the Panzer Aces, which also I'm very unfamiliar with. Um, it's not something that I used to carry at my store. And it's um, it's something that's more for, you know, kind of like um, a lot of professional modelers out there on the modeling side, not necessarily the hobbyists like we are. But nonetheless, it is a hobby in and of itself. So you've got Dark Rust here. Then you've got Light Rust, which obviously complement each other very well, I feel like. Then you get into, what is this one right here? This is orange brown, which also very very cool looking paint. Now, you know, if you follow Kenny's tutorials and things over on the next level painting on the Long War, you probably remember a Reaper color called Harvest Brown that he loves so much. And a lot of these actually are looking like this particular one right here, this light light rust looks a lot like uh, Reaper Harvest Brown to be honest. So that's really interesting to see that there uh, there's a lot of colors out there that we're not that we're still not even familiar with as as hobbyists. Then you've got chocolate brown, chocolate brown, and German camel camouflage black brown say that 10 times fast so all of those together really help to make all the streaking and kind of things come alive in this tutorial by uh, mr. scratch mod himself so let's take a look at that real quick so once again just like the special effects um, tutorial that came uh, with this particular set right here there's some really good advice in this one and, you know, they basically give you the basics on highlighting, you know, the different layers. It all kind of layers up towards the top. Shading, you layer into the bottom with the lightest being at the, the bottom and the, the highest being at the top. So it's really, you know, really basic stuff there. Here's the content colors. Kind of give you a better idea of what, you know, they look like when applied. And then they start getting into kind of showing you the rusting and streaking side of things right here. And that's where we're kind of going to pick things up. So what I like about this is, you know, they basically go in and they start doing the chipping, which depending on what kind of color you're using, you know, they're saying use this 
uh, German camouflage black brown right here, okay, which kind of gets you into there and starts making all those chips that you see, right? So you see all these chips kind of like enlarged here, and then you can kind of see them all on the rest of the vehicle. And so what happens is you basically use your base color, which is this deck, uh, what is it, this deck tan right here, and you basically start chipping it up. And then you start adding in your rust, and it starts with, you know, depending on um, the actual, if you like this dark color or you want to go a little bit lighter, you can use the German chocolate brown according to this, and then you can kind of water it down, and it goes, it can get into the actual recesses here and act like a, a sort of a rust. Then, once you get all your chipping done, you can start doing other things, uh, you know, like doing the streaking with your rust, which is really interesting because, you know, they refer to this, uh, this kind of process called stumping, which is taking a damp kind of flat chisel brush, and once you apply the paint, see at this point, they're putting in an orange right there, and it's really bright, it's really striking, then they're going back with this damp chisel brush, or, or flat brush, it's not a chisel, and they're basically breaking up the pattern, kind of diffusing it, kind of doing like a little, um, a little faux wet blending if you, if you want, and that's really interesting to see, and then you kick it up to these ones over here, which are the, you know, the brighter cousins, or wait, not that one one and one so you got that uh, the orange rust and where is it up oh, here it is and the orange brown and you start they start taking it up and doing the same thing over time and just kind of blending it back and adding in a little bit you know watering it down by a third and you start get, being able to kind of spread it out and add in kind of spread it out here and you can start doing rust the full-on like you know pools of rust and things in certain areas and they also show that you can tape off areas and airbrush it right into you know where you want to go with it because remember two of these are actual airbrush paints so they'll go you know the, you don't even really have to thin them down much so boom super easy easy game easy life so once you get all that done and get all the you know get all your base rust effects uh, down you can start with the streaking which I thought was really interesting now Obviously, if you have a lot of space, this little brush here is going to take forever to do it. So that's why I'm saying, you know, to produce the best effects, you have to use the smaller scale brushes. And it's not something that can really be offered commercially by a studio. But you know, from a hobbyist standpoint, this is you know, this is the shit we crack out to, and it's always it's always cool to see it on vehicles. And you know, people are divided whether they want their stuff clean or they want their stuff, you know, a little dirtied up. But hey, I think at the end of the day, it's all just personal preference, right? You know, as you as you master you know add all these things to your hobby arsenal and you start mastering certain parts of painting I feel like hey yeah maybe I want to take the next step maybe I want to start doing some weathering maybe I want to tie all my stuff together you know because if I weather stuff a certain way all my things are going to kind of tie together if I'm doing all like allies and things you know I want the same rust patterns I want the same you know vendigris over here the same wash here the same stains here so it kind of like in and of itself slowly starts blending all your armies together it's just something to think about right so then you get here and you kind of they show you how to do the streaking and you know the the stumping and you know the wet blending and things. It, this is you know this is something that you just can't learn just by you know reading off a pamphlet. But it's always good to have the visuals and you know having the models to practice on as well. And they also talk about you know going back and using the base colors like the chocolate browns and things to actually go back and and actually streak streak it with a fine detail brush right there to get those little fine streaks in that you would naturally see as you know things kind of wear and rust and weather over its life cycle and then when you get to the bottom you know they start talking about actually using the wash that comes with it as well and kind of getting really super crazy so you go from that down to here and super crazy with it now they, they say you know you can start with the wash at step five which is up here and just kind of skip us up a couple of things but with anything if you do all the steps in order it gives you a natural depth and natural progression and, and you know a natural look to things you know like getting back to Kenny over at Next Level Painting you know he, some of his paints look so well because he builds them up over you know a couple of coats like his golds were looking sick and I was like yo how did you do these golds and he's like well I did silver underneath it and I was like wait what he's like yeah I did it silver first and I was like I didn't even believe him I thought he was fucking with me and then I saw the video tutorial and sure enough he did silver underneath it first to get the gold 
And I was like, that that just blows my mind, you know, and doing doing greens before reds and all these tips and tricks out there that it seems redundant and stupid at the time. You're like, man, I could have saved like an hour there. But when you look at the finished product, you're just like, man, this is so neat. This is so, it's it just pops, you know, it's just so deep in depth. And, you know, so it's like taking these extra steps sometimes. You gotta, you gotta weigh your options. Is the juice worth the squeeze or do you just wanna get done? I feel like if you're doing weathering and things, you're probably in it to win it and you do wanna stay the course and, you know, go the extra mile to make your stuff look spectacular because if you're buying the set, you've obviously um, embarked on a different part of the hobby and are willing to take this time and effort to do these sort of things so it's really neat you know our hobby is really exciting and just the fact that you know nowadays you have these cool kits offered out there you know just to be able to get them and you know have everything in one place have your neat little like kind of how-to uh, tutorial right there you don't have to go run into the internet and doing Google searches doing YouTube searches you, know, you can try it out. It gives you everything you need except for basically a paintbrush out of the box to be successful with the technique. And, you know, Vallejo's a great company. They've been around actually since the 50s. Now, models haven't been around since the 50s, but they've been making paint since that long. And it's really cool to see how they, you know, they broke into the American market, you know, in the early 2000s. And they just, they really have a, a commitment to quality. I met Mr. Vallejo uh, many years ago up in New York, and he's a great guy. He's really, you, know, you can really tell he loves doing what he's doing and you know I can't say enough good things about Vallejo products so if you ever see anything new come out from those guys you know those folks over there in Spain and that looks really neat like this stuff you know always give it a try I mean it's it's I haven't bought a bad thing from Vallejo like ever <laughs> so I can't say enough good things about these guys out there definitely so I uh, hope you enjoyed my unboxing of the rust and rust to stain and streaky kit from Vallejo paints also check the channel as well for the special effects set that should be up here um, in some sort of video queue perhaps uh, before or after this one deleted scenes bonus content and all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached that's not all the longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad free experience to all your favorite videos Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.